I talked to a number of IMF voters who are here today who identify as moderate Democrats or Republicans. Um, and I just wondered if we get into the caucuses, do you think that's a winning coalition? <laughs> I think we have a really a vast uh, spectrum of people supporting me. I mean, we have Ruth Ann Gaines in Des Moines, who's a legislator who's pretty liberal. And then we've got Andy McKean, who used to be a Republican that changed parties uh, to Democratic. And right in this area, of course, having Liz and having Molly uh, is really amazing. So I just think uh, the thing about me is I've never really liked labels. Um, I do think we need more civility. I think we need to bring people with us, including independents and moderate Republicans. But I also have uh, the bulk of my support is rank and file Democrats, and I know that. Um, and I just think we need everyone if we want to win big. Because if we just eke by a victory at four in the morning in the presidential race, that won't be Iowa. That won't be the last state. Um, and I want to have a victory that brings the Midwest with us. And I am the candidate that has clearly said, it's not flyover country to me. I live here. Mm -hmm. um, considering your opponents uh, on the Democratic side, is there enough of a middle for you? Uh, yes. I mean, I have been the one, and when you look at everyone that's had to leave the race, um, people who I am beating right now uh, in not just Iowa, but New Hampshire as well. Um, I'm the one that has been true to myself from the very beginning. I read that Medicare for All bill, and while I know it was good intention, I looked at page eight, and it basically says 149 million Americans will lose their current insurance. I am the one on the debate stage who is in the Senate that did not get on the bill. Um, I am the one that has said from the beginning uh, that I thought it was a big problem for Donald Trump to get us out of the Iranian nuclear ban agreement, and now we can see what's happening. So um, I think my experience of being in the Senate for 12 years, um, being the only one on the stage that's on the Agriculture Committee and made rural economy a big part of my work, that should matter for the people of Iowa. Mm -hmm. And so I think I actually have a distinct um, uh, candidacy because I'm only one of two people from the Midwest um, and I'm really uh, the one that has a record it's not just talking points for me a record of standing up for rural America mm -hmm. is there a message you'd want to get out to maybe more pr progressive or liberal voters who weren't sure. here today exactly um, I am with them on nearly every issue uh, that our party cares about our reproductive rights uh, climate change um, making sure we do something about gun safety. Um, you could just go through the issues and I've been on their side. I got a 100% rating from the uh, conservation voters. Uh, high ratings from every uh, group from uh, a human rights campaign uh, to Planned Parenthood. Um, and that's important to me. But what's also important to me is bringing people along with me. And that's maybe why I have a different tone than some of our candidates, but it's worked. Mm -hmm. I have won in red districts over and over and over again. And um, I think that when you really look at my record, I have always brought in a fired up Democratic base, including people of color. I have the highest voting turnout when I lead the ticket in the state of Minnesota over any state in the country. So what I would say, to our uh, progressive, uh, incredible base uh, that I actually have the receipts. Because if you want to be a progressive, you want to elect people that make progress. And I've done that. Um, and then as impeachment takes you back to DC, how do you plan on staying relevant? in these final days as we lead up to the conference? Well, um, the debate made me relevant. Um, the fact that I have more endorsements of legislators and former legislators in the state of Iowa than anyone in the race is going to be a big help to me. That will be a good Bless moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's going to make me uh, um, uh, able to be in every room because mm -hmm. we have so many endorsers and uh, surrogates, as they're called. Uh, my husband and my daughter are incredible campaigners. My daughter's going to be here all next week. Um, she told me the other day that she got a uh, standing ovation in New Hampshire. I said, oh, that's so great, honey. She said, yeah, Mom, they were standing the entire time. So that's why it was a standing ovation. Um, she's going to be good. And then we have the governor of Minnesota, the lieutenant governor, who's the highest ranking American Indian elected in any uh, state in the country. Uh, they are going to be coming down as well as many members of the congressional delegation. Um, then I'm going to be using modern technology. We're doing a tele-town hall. I will be Skyping into things. And anytime we know we're going to have some time off of that trial, I'll be coming here. Okay. Um, 
Um, and then just lastly, uh, what does getting that Quad City Times endorsement today mean for you? Uh, that meant so much. It wasn't just getting the endorsement over all the other candidates, it was what they wrote. Um, they basically um, really were able in just beautiful language to point out um, that you want to have a candidate that brings people together. Someone with the experience to get the things done that everyone's been talking about on the debate stage. And they also made a point that I've actually done the work of representing rural America instead of just talking about it. And I think that's really, really important. So, um, and I appreciated their recognition of my work, you know, everything from um, being the leader on prescription drug prices to uh, being a leader when it comes to rural broadband and infrastructure, which is so key uh, to this part of Iowa. Thank you so much. Okay, really thank you. It. Yeah, appreciate it. it.